Hi, and welcome back to another episode on how to hack. So today we're going to discuss about how to bypass intrusion prevention systems, network intrusion prevention detection systems. So in many large enterprises, they dissect the segment of the network into multiple subnetwork. And within each of the subnetwork, you have one that is internet facing, which is the demilitarized zone, where you have all your public facing websites. Could be a web application service, could be your application service, your application programming interfaces service, and many of these different systems that allow interaction with the public internet. And at the same time, yet available for some form of connectivity between into the private network. So from public network, your DMZ zone, as well as your internal sub networks. And each of them are governed by different network protocols, network infrastructure to protect those segments. And many a time, many of these subset uh, sub network actually have network intrusion prevention systems, intrusion detection systems working alongside to help detect the different kind of potential attacks coming in. You're trying to do espionage, infiltration, data breaches and the likes. It will be detected at least on a network layer and then coincided across the entire enterprise environment. And then of course from there, we'll be able to see what kind of technology is being used on many of these NIPS and be able to bypass them successfully. So let's kick start the tutorial today. So on the left side of the screen, I actually have Ubuntu running. So I'm going to zoom in a little so it's easier for you to see the instructions that we key in into the terminal. So over here, I can enter ifconfig and I'll be able to see that Ubuntu is using a IP address of 192.168.1.18. And of course, on the right side of the screen, I have Kali Linux running. So again, opening up the terminal, zooming it a little more so it's easier for you to see the instructions that we key in. And again, I enter ifconfig and we see the IP address of 192.168.1.17. And again, as I mentioned earlier today, the whole purpose of the attack is to be able to do stealth scans because there are network intrusion prevention systems, network intrusion detection systems, and they're all able and capable of picking up all this kind of different scanning in the environment and be able to flag out offenses. So what we're going to do is there are many different type of ways that we can actually attack a particular system. So over here, I'm going to launch Wireshark. So I'm going to do sudo Wireshark and it's going to launch Wireshark asking for password. And once I launch it in, I'll be able to access Wireshark and be able to pack, capture all the packets you're transacting within a particular network interface. So I'm going to click on to ENP. 0s3, which is 192.168.1.18, as you can see on the address. Double click on it, and it's going to start monitoring for all the different kind of packets that are coming in into this particular operating system. So over here, we can see there we have a source and destination IP address running on UDP. And when you double click on it, you can see the user datagram is using on UDP, which is a fire and forget kind of protocol. Of course, it could be transmission protocol and over here, we have ARP, which is Address Resolution Protocol. And again, if you remember from one of the previous videos, we actually did an ARP poisoning to change the IP address of the attacking machine. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a very simple nmap scan command over straight to Ubuntu and see what is the result coming in from the attacking machine. So we're going to do nmap 192.168.1. Dot so over here, uh, again, when we go back to the screen, we see the IP address 192.168.1.18. So going back to Wireshark and then going back to the attacking machine, and when we launch the attack, you see that the Wireshark is flooding all the different kind of packets that are coming in, going after the, the host machine. So when I click on one of them, let's say I click on uh, this item over here, and then we can see under the Ethernet 2, we can see the MAC address, the destination and the source. And the source, of course, we can see the MAC address. We can see it's IPv4. The source destination is from 192.168.1.18 to 192.168.1.17. And of course, we got transmission protocol and it's targeting a source port 444. And when we scroll up, we can see again the source port are changing to 049. Because by default, the MMAP command actually send the default commonly used port numbers for scanning, not the whole of the 65512. So from here, we can see it's only scanning for common vulnerabilities, common ports that are opening to identify whether the host is alive. So again, 
With this kind of scanning techniques that are so aggressive, it can easily be detected. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down a little more and we're going to look at the different kind of commands available. So when I enter man and map, we're going to see the different parameters that we can access or we can enter into the system. So there's a few of this that we're going to look at it. It's going to help us be able to bypass, bypass NIPS, NIDS and the likes. So you can see different kind of commands that are available. So we have fast mode, we have scan parts, uh, we have SV and the likes. All these are not useful in bypassing NIPS and NI, NIDS. So of course, what's really important, there are a couple of important parameters that we're going to show today. So I'm going to go back to Nmap and instead this time around, we're going to add in more parameters so that this help us be able to randomize or to mask our scanning technique. So when I enter Nmap, I can enter, for example, additional data length of say 36. And this actually help create random bytes to the most packets to send. So again, most NIPS and IDS are using filtering mechanisms. They're using signature based network protocols to understand what type of scanning is in the environment. And this may help us bypass NIPS. So when I hit onto this, and of course, we again, this time around, we can see that the packets number are different. So as I scroll in to the system, I can see that the frame, the bytes, it's all different from the, the previously saw attack that we that we tried to compromise under the system to gain more information. So this help us mask the identity, but of course it's not sufficient. So we actually have to perform more different types of attacks. So I can enter dash F. So dash F stands for fragmenting the packets. So this will, this will frequently fool low end and improperly configured uh, intrusion detection system. So when I enter onto this, and this time around, when you see onto it, you can see that the red highlights are being segmented more further away from each other. So because we are fragmenting the IP address. So when we fragment them, we see that the data byte is only eight bytes. And when we click onto the other ones, we are able to see that many of the sending is not being flagged out so easily because it requires reassembly of the packets in order to find out whether it is an offense or whether it is a legitimate network protocol. So this is another good way for us to actually hijack into systems. So, and, and of course, to bypass the detection mechanism on the network layer. And another really great attempt that we can do is because our IP address is so, is stipulated so clearly onto the offense attempt, we can also change the IP address of what we are sending. So over here, uh, we can enter a dash capital S followed by the, this will mask the IP address. So we can say 192.168.1. For example, we could put four and then followed by the ethernet uh, network interface that we want to use. And then when you hit enter, so this time around, as I scroll down uh, into the attack attempt, we see that the source and the destination address is very different now. We have 192.168.1.4 and then destination of 192.168.1.18. Again, the whole idea is to be able to mask our network traffic during the scan so that we can bypass network intrusion prevention systems. And again, the, the final parameter that we can use is of course, to actually slow down the, the setting of the timing. And again, we have a option called dash T, which is the paranoid setting. So it will scan the environment very, very slowly. So I'm going to clear out the Wireshark and I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to be able to open up again a new Wireshark. And when I open it up and I start to scan and then when I click enter, dash T followed by paranoid. So when I hit enter, again, you're not going to see the traffic coming in so frequently. So you're not going to see the traffic coming in and, and the Wireshark or narrow intrusion prevention system sort of filtering the signature based detection. I'm not going to pick it up so easily through the slow scan. So of course, with a slow scan, it comes at a price is that it's going to take a long time for you to find out the, the services that are running on a particular host or the operating system fingerprint that you're trying to find out on the host. So it's going to take some longer time. So with that, we come to the end of the tutorial. There you've seen how quickly we could actually change different parameters, different configurations. And as we try to scan the different IT assets in the environment, the target machines or the different kind of machines within the subnetwork, the different kind of protocols that you could use, different kind of configurations that you can use so that you can mask the identity of the attacking machine and be able to covertly 
target and to get different kind of services information, fingerprinting of the operating system, and be able to t give you telltale signs on how you can move from reconnaissance and then of course into the exploitation phase of the attack chain. So with that, we come to the end of the tutorial. So I hope you learned something valuable today. And of course, most importantly, try out all the different parameters, get a open source intrusion, intrusion prevention system, test it out against all your parameters that you have tried in today's tutorial, and then you'll be able to see how you can bypass many of this whether it is open source commercial IDS and be able to get more accessible information into those systems undetected. And thank you for watching.